Hello Internet, I am the Hero of Julios once again with another episode of my Salt Marsh blog. In today's episode, the players have returned to Salt Marsh after their journey out to sea to obtain a large safe worth of money, and they do, they return, and they get the safe back to its proper owner. Uh, I do have a little change in the roster for this episode. Uh, unfortunately, uh, the sister of the twin rogues could not make it to today's session. Uh, there was just uh, reasons. Um, so I have my other rogue. I have my fighter, my wizard cleric, uh, the druid, and then the monk who left got replaced by a different monk last week. I had two monks last week, but one of the monks has stayed and will be a part of this for the foreseeable future until other things shift around. So in case that changes anything in this vlog, I don't know if it will. It's more of just for me to keep track of uh, now Dryax is out and Felix is in as far as monks go. Anyways, the party of five get back to Salt Marsh and I tell them everything in Salt Marsh is a normal day in Salt Marsh. The people are making trades, the children are running around, there's a giant gaping hole in the Prime Water Mansion. That's right. Gellin Primewater had some unexpected visitors while the players were gone. Players did not know this, but it was um, Calcifer and crew. Not Calcifer himself, of course, but a delivered message to a business partner between them. And unfortunately for me, uh, this is a DMing first for me. I made a painfully obvious plot hook for the players to go investigate. And their response was... Screw Gallon, we don't like them. And they kept walking. In fact, they decided they're going to go see what Lady Zendros is up to. Uh, but first, they went to pay off, or not pay off, they went to get paid for delivering the safe back safely. They did try to negotiate to obtain an indestructible magical safe, to which I responded, uh, the guy is willing to sell you guys the safe. In exchange, instead of getting 10,000 gold, you can have five plus the indestructible safe. They elected against that, so indestructible safe is not a part of their boat. I'm not exactly sure what they would have even done with it aside from store things in it, but the fact that the magic in it made it indestructible, I couldn't just give it to them for a low price. That's just not a sensible thing to do. Anyways, going back to what I was saying, uh, this is a DMing first to have a obvious plot hook that my players just sort of walked right past and they went to Lady Zendros instead. So I thought, hmm, well, there goes my plan for today's session. Guess I'm improvising again. So they decide to put in some orders for some new magic items and stuff. And I learned the meaning of the word wondrous item rather than um, other types of magic items. Uh, apparently, the way Wondrous Item is worded in the Dungeon Master's Guide is that it is not a one-of-a-kind item like I originally thought. It is just a catch-all term that describes anything that is in armor, weapons, or potions, you know, anything like that. So keep that in mind. I think I'm still going to keep it to legendary items are one-of-a-kind, but as far as in your campaigns, if you thought like I did, Wondrous Items are not one-of-a-kind. They are just... Wondrous. So as they're putting in their orders for Zendros, they're starting to ask her her prices on some things, and eventually they come to a conclusion that they do not have enough money for the things they want. I, as the DM, want to give my players the things they want, but it is also my job as the DM to not just hand them things, because if you just give your players stuff without any effort, how will they actually appreciate what they have? Now, I know, I know, that sounds like some deep philosophy that I'm trying to impart to some noble DM, but the truth of the matter is, what is a video game? What is a board game? What is a role-playing game? If you don't actually do something and receive reward, if the game is just receive reward, I could make them level 20 right now and give them all the legendary magic items, and then what, they just one-shot bosses? It's not very fun. At least not for me I don't I mean as a player when I do play I don't think it's fun if I just get everything I want where's the character development so Lady Zendros decides to give them a job and they are going to become one of her many contacts that she uses to get magic items 
See, due to the vagueness of Saltmarsh describing characters, it doesn't really say how or why Zendros has the ability to get the magic item she does. So what I figured is that once she trusts an adventuring party enough, she decides that they are worthy of going and getting something for her that somebody else requested. And then eventually that person who requested from her might earn her trust enough. They become someone who goes gets magic items for her so that she can sell to someone else. And she works as this lovely go-between between between many different people seeking magic items. Now these players are on the dangerous side of her business where they are off to the deep woods because I gave them two choices. Either they could go get a rare magic item for her and one of the rare magic items they were asking for is free. Or... They could get her a very rare magic item and two rare magic items and a common or uncommon magic item is free. Now, I know what you're thinking, those of you who have read Salt Marsh, uh, isn't she making a lot more profit than she is offering them as reward? Yes, that's how capitalism works. <laughs> you know, not everyone is going to pat you on the back fairly. And since she's the one with access to all the magic items, she gets to set the rules. Zendros is a very business-oriented woman, at least the way I'm presenting her in this game. So, long story short, they obviously went with the option that gets them more things. So they are heading to the Deep Wood to get a magic harp that controls the weather, a very rare magic item. And I have decided that the boss battle they are going to face is a vampire. Because vampire, there are some vampires in the Dreadwood that serve under uh, Granny Nightshade. Now, they are level 7, but there are 6 of them. I think they can handle one single vampire. And the goal is to get the harp. It's not to kill the vampire. So they might figure out a different way to work around it. But, since they skipped the uh, stuff with Gellin Primewater, I still need to figure out how to tie this into the big bad evil guy, Calcifer. So I think this is a perfect opportunity for a Silco Round 2. So maybe that'll be the boss battle. Regardless of how this happens, uh, I think doing it this way might be an easier, more fun way to tie things together for them. Might even give them motivation to attack Granny Nightshade, my original intention, uh, if they do decide to go deeper into the woods. Otherwise, I think I'm going to keep locations between Deepwood, uh, this one city that's north of Saltmarsh, and then finally the hold of the sea princes should they decide to go further than calcifer eh, but that hey uh tonight's uh, today's session so we'll find out where things go in the next episode thank you for watching as always and i will see you in that next episode this is the hero of julios xing out